Previously, we also mentioned a little bit about two types of services, local and remote services. In this section, I'll be talking a little more about what each of those stand for. The service builder can generate two service variants. This is a local and a remote service. And how you will configure this is within your service XML. You'll add an attribute for local service if you want that to be true and remote service if you want that to be true. By default, the remote service is false. Let's first talk about the local service. The local service is responsible for calling the persistence layer to retrieve and store data entities. And so this is meant for accessing the service without permission checks. And this can be invoked from the same Java virtual machine. On the contrary, remote services are meant for accessing the service remotely through web services. You can also access the service locally, but with permission checks. And this usually contain facade methods adding permission checks for the local service methods. All user level access to services should use the remote service. If permission checks are not needed, then you should not use the remote service, but instead use the local service for better performance. So here's the implementation classes. Service Builder creates implementation classes for every defined entity's local service, remote service, model class, and entity finders. And these are the only class meant to be modified, specifically the implementation classes. The service must be regenerated if implementation classes are modified, as we talked about previously, adding, removing methods, and even modifying method signatures. Let's talk a little bit about finders. And these are database querying methods. These are also defined within the service XML within your entities, and they're automatically cached, which helps improve performance. There's two types. There's regular finders without permission checks, and then there's filtered finders, which include permission checks. Filtered finders are generated only if permissioning is enabled, and finders can be customized in entity-specific finder implementation classes. Then we also have service wrappers, and these can be used to override the service classes. The service builder module template creates two modules. In the case of our gradebook, we will have the gradebook API and the gradebook service. Service Builder creates wrapper stub classes for all the generated services, and then the wrapper classes are generated in the API module. Here is an example of a Service Builder architecture. So you see in the red, this is all the services layer, which is what we're talking about right now. We have the database, the file storage at the very bottom, and this interacts with the persistence and the finders. And then you have local service and remote service in the layer above, and this will call the different finders and persistences that link to the database. And then you have any wrappers that you can add to do pre-processing, post-processing, do additional checks to, and this will be the layer that's closest to the user. And finally, we also have the service context and a context object is one that aggregates information necessary for features used throughout DXP's portlets and services such as actions, request parameters, classifications, exceptions, scoping, locale, request objects, and permission related information. And so you can think of this as a toolbox showing and giving a lot of helpful information regarding the current state of the instance. We also have caching. We have built-in caching support bundled with Service Builder. And there's three levels of this. You have entity level caching, finder level caching, and hibernate or the database level. Edcache is the default cache provider for all the levels. So when we talk about hibernate caching, there's two levels. Level one caches objects retrieved from the database within the current database session. And this is tied to an invocation of LifeRace service layer. You also have level two caching, and this spans across database sessions and it stores database objects. So this is the entity cache and the results of queries, so the query cache.